Aunt Frank, did you ever hear anyone rattle on so? Now that I think of it, dearie, don't you go on encouraging him. I'm sure he's a regular good for nothing. Sure. Yes. Sure. I'm afraid Frank's a thorough good for nothing. I shall have to get rid of him. But I shall feel sorry for him. Poor lad, he's not worth it. That man Crofts does not seem to me to be good for much either. What do you know of men, child, to talk of them like that? You'll have to make up your mind to see a great deal of Sir George Crofts as he's a friend. Why? Do you expect that we shall be much together? You and I, I mean. Well, of course. Until you're married, you're not going back to college again. Do you think my way of life would suit you? I doubt it. Your way of life? What do you mean? Has it really never occurred to you, Mother, that I have a way of life like other people? <laughs> what nonsense is this you're trying to talk? Are you trying to show me your independence now that you're a great little person at school? Don't be a fool, child. That's all you have to say on the subject, is it, Mother? Don't you go on asking me questions like that. Hold your tongue. Your way of life, indeed. What next? Your way of life will be what I please. So it will. I've been noticing these airs in you ever since you got that tripus or whatever it's called. If you think I'm going to put up with them, you're mistaken. And the sooner you find that out, the better. Well, I have to say on the subject, indeed. Do you know who you're speaking to, no. Miss? Who are you? What are you? You young imp! Everybody knows my reputation, my social standing, and the profession that I intend to pursue. I know nothing about you. What is this way of life, pray, that you invite for me to share with you and Sir George Crofts? Take care. Or I shall do something I shall be sorry for after, and you too. And let us drop the subject until you are better able to face it. You need some good walks and a little lawn tennis to set you up. You are shockingly out of condition. You were not able to manage twenty yards uphill today without stopping to pant. And your arms are mere rolls of fat. Look at mine. Oh, Vivi! Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Anything but that, pray. I, I cannot stand whimpering. I will go out of the room if you two. <laughs> oh, my darling, how can you be so hard on me? Have I no rights over you as a mother? Are you my mother? Am I your mother? Oh, Vivi! Then where is my father? Uh, our relatives? Uh, our family uh, friends? Uh, you claim the rights of a mother. The right to call me fool and child? To speak to me as no woman in authority over me at college would ever dare speak to me? Uh, to dictate my way of life? And to force on me the acquaintance of a brute whom anyone can see to be the most vicious sort of London man about town? I give myself the trouble to resist such claims, I might as well find out whether they have any real existence. Oh, no, no, stop, stop! I am your mother, I swear it! Oh, you can't mean to turn on me? My own child? It's not natural! You do believe me, don't you? Say you believe me! Who is my father? I don't, you don't know what you're asking. I can't tell you that. Yes, you can! If you like. I have a right to know, and you know very well that I have that right. You can refuse to tell me if you like. But if you do, you, should, you shall see the last of me tomorrow morning. It's too horrible to hear you talk like that. You wouldn't. You couldn't leave me. I would, without a moment's hesitation, if you trifle with me about this. How can I be sure that I don't have the contaminated blood of that brutal waster in my veins? No, no, on my oath, it's not he, nor any of the others that you have ever met. I'm certain of that, at least. You're certain of that, at least? You mean that is all you're certain of? Oh, you see. Oh. Don't do that. You can t I can tell you don't feel it a bit. That is enough for tonight. At what hour would you like breakfast? Is half past eight too early? Oh, my God, what sort of a woman are you? The sort the world is mostly made of, I should hope. 
Otherwise, I don't see how it gets its business done. Come now. Pull yourself together, that's right. You don't have any rough with me, Nonsense. baby! Nonsense! What about bed? It's past ten. What's the use of going to bed? You think I could sleep? Why not? I shall. You? You have no heart! Oh, oh, I won't bear it. I won't put up with the injustice of it. What right have you to set yourself up above me like this? You boast of who you are, you mean to me? Who gave you the chance of being what you are? What chance had I? Shame on you for being a bad daughter and a stuck-up prude. Don't think that I set myself above you in any way. You attacked me with the conventional authority of a mother. I defended myself with the conventional authority of a respectable woman. I shall always respect you. Your right to your own opinions and your own way of life. My own opinions and my own way of life? Ha <laughs> ha, listen to her talking. You think I was brought up like you, able to pick and choose my own way of life? You think I did what I did because I liked it, or thought it was right, or would have rather have gone to college and been a lady if I'd had the chance? Everybody has some choice, Mother. The poorest girl alive may not be able to choose between being the Queen of England and the Principal of Newnham, but she can choose between rag picking and flower selling according to her tastes. People are always blaming their circumstances for who they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in this world are the people that get up and find the circumstances that they want. And if they don't find them, make them. <laughs> it's easy to talk, ain't it? Yeah. You want to know what these circumstances were, Ducky? Yes. You had better tell me. Won't you sit down? Oh, I'll sit myself down all right. Don't you be afraid.